All right, so ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, we yeah. appreciate you yeah. coming through today. Apologies about the mix-up. We thought I would be on the outside as we usually do, but the person who sent away the rain the other time did not do it. He did it the other time. Today he did not send away the rain. <laughs> but, but we are glad that we could uh, use this place and the rest. We'll try and be as quick as we possibly can. I request us to stand, do a quick prayer, and then we shall roll. Okay. So, shall we try to be in prayer? Our beloved Christian family, that we are so glad that we are here. We are here, 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 we are here. Oh God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this first conference. We thank you that we are here. We thank you for the gift of time and meeting us. Uh, oh God, we ask that you give us wisdom and lead us to this first conference. <coughs> and then, amen. 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 So, we invited you today to interrupt about a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Museveni did issue his State of the Nation address last week, uh, but uh, from where we sit, there is many things that our leaders are not putting focus on. You know, in people power, we like to say that we major and majors and minor and minors. We, we think that in his address, he majored on many minors, and he minored on several majors. And uh, so today we'll share our thoughts about what, what we view the state of this uh, good country, Uganda, from where we sit, from our perspective. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Joya. I welcome all of you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we thank you for your continued response, even when you write a short notice. Ladies and gentlemen, before I make any further uh, comments I want to, um, on behalf of the People Power Movement, add our voice on the many voices that have been raised all over the world. Two weeks ago, yet another black man was murdered by police. Uh, brother George Floyd was killed, which sparked off a wide um, you know, wave of protests uh, against racial injustice that has persisted for so many years in the United States and yes, all over the world. We join uh, the brothers and sisters from different races demanding for justice for black people and equality. I must also mention that it's rather embarrassing that uh, protests are going on in all cities of the world, but here in Uganda we cannot raise our voices, we cannot publicly stand in solidarity with our black brothers and sisters in America because it is not only illegal but it is dangerous in Uganda to protest for a right. President Museveni, who has for a very long time purported to be a pan-Africanist, is silent in, this, in the face of this injustice. Just like, just like he was not only silent but also blocked all our efforts to return our brothers and sisters that were being oppressed in China on account of their skin color, the same is happening. Uganda is giving the world a deafening silence about the injustices that are going on against black people in America. So um, I want, together with the team, to take a knee as a gesture of standing in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in the United States of America. And we join them and all say, Black Lives Matter. Thank you very much. So, President Museveni presented the State of the Nation address last week. And from our viewpoint, um, we see a communication from someone who is completely out of touch with the reality on the ground. Having been in power for 34 years, he cares more about his cling onto power than the betterment of Ugandans. So below are the critical issues which remain a challenge and the citizens 
of Uganda must press our leaders to fix them. About education, UPE is meant to be a good program, but it has been consistently poorly managed and denied the resources it needs to be empowered and also empower the young generation with good education. The enrollment of P1 is at 95 percent, but primary, primary education completion is at the rate of 52 percent due to various underlying uh, challenges. According to the Weso Uganda uh, Learning Assessment, uh, the program of 2019, only 33% of primary school children in P2 and above could read and understand a simple P2 level story. What's clear is that UPE is about quantity and not quality. Friends Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. But if Uganda is to change, then we must provide quality education to the young generation of Uganda. About health, we all know that 41% of our country's population is undernourished. 26% of the children are stunted. Women continue to die while giving birth. Our hospitals are ill-equipped. Health workers are poorly paid. All this is because our leaders care not since they have always accessed their health care outside Uganda and at a very expensive uh, price paid by the taxpayer. COVID-19 has cut off all the movements across the world, meaning that our leaders can only access health care locally. It is our hope and prayer that this is enough motivation for them to pay attention to the country's ailing health care system, something they have very long time. About climate change, it is sad, a sad reality indeed, that the wetland destruction of restoration, the biggest culprits in this matter have been the powerful. According to the Auditor General's annual report, only 0.03%. According to the Auditor General's annual report, only 3.0, I mean 3.0 percent of the destroyed wetlands have been restored. 50 percent of our forest cover has been lost since 1994, all under seven. If we pay no attention to our environment, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to continue to suffer devastating. Many are clearly manifesting themselves before our eyes. About water and sanitation, according to the, UN, uh, according to the UNICEF, 60% of Uganda's children collect water from a source that is 30 minutes away from their homes. Only 39% of the country's population has access to safe drinking water. 33 children die of diarrhea every day. Diarrhea, I must say, is mainly uh, caused from drinking unsafe water. According to the Water and Environment Sector Performance, uh, a report of 2019, 22.9 of the rural population were practicing open defecation. And for the urban areas, it is at 12.1%. About human rights, our country's human rights record is so disturbing. Like you all know, Violations have continued to happen in a manner so wanton. Opposition leaders are often targeted simply because they hold a different view from those that are in power. Honorable Frank announcing injuries and cannot clear, uh, easily open his eyes after he was tortured by the brutal regime forces. A, no a number of our comrades, including Yasin Kauma, Akim Sekama, Richard Lamu Kenya, Dan Chene, to mention but a few, have been brutally murdered by the security operatives. No answers have been provided to their families, and no one has been held accountable for these evil acts. Mm -hmm. We shall not get tired of seeking justice for our comrades in both local and international courts of law. About the economy, our country's imports are about twice the exports. A trend that should worry every Ugandan. 
local production is low, so we have very little to export to the international market. This is so because we tend to focus mainly on foreign, importer, uh, foreign investors and we ignore the local investors. If we can avail land, tax waivers, and even money to the foreign investors, there's absolutely no reason why the indigenous business people should not be given a shot in the arm. About 67% of Ugandan businesses which start don't live up to their first birthday. And this is simply because the cost of keeping their heads above the water is too high. Government programs like Bubu, Buy Uganda, Build Uganda will not make any headway if we look only at the foreign businesses and ignore the local businesses. About corruption, <laughs> President Museveni's government feeds on corruption. He once said at a rally that it's actually not bad to steal from government funds for as long as one invests in the country. Well, with such an attitude from the president or the so-called fountain of honor, it is, no, it is no wonder that corruption continues to choke our country with no ramifications of the, uh, to the perpetrators of that corruption. It will only take a people-centered government like the one we want to bring about to solve this challenge. About the informal sector, it uh, is a, sec a sector that has been hit hardest by this lockdown. It is therefore appalling that while everyone was at home in obedience of the lockdown regulations, government officials were busy hatching plans to draw <laughs> border borders and taxis out of the city. I repeat, it is saddening that while people, especially the common people, were busy obeying the regulations of the lockdown, government, government officials were, uh, were hatching a plan to keep taxi and border border operators out of the city. We all want a developed city, ladies and gentlemen, but development should be consultative and inclusive. All stakeholders should be part of the process. After all, they are the ones for whom, for, they're the ones for whom the development is being planned. So we call upon the operators of border borders and taxis to demand to be part of the process as stakeholders and not to be locked out uh, still today as it is in the case. Ladies and gentlemen, I must conclude by challenging President Museveni to be honest. While he was starting his State of Nation address, he cited the 10-point program, which in my opinion and in the opinion of many was sheer hypocrisy. He mentioned uh, their initial desires to restore democracy and things like national unity and fighting sectarianism, but we all know that it was a bluff. We all know that he and his government have terribly failed the country. And that is the reason why Ugandans should unite and join us so that we can kick President Museveni's government of national shame out of power. We thank you for God and our country. Thank you.